Hi guys, welcome to this tutorial. Um, as you can see, we're in Nuke today. Uh, I've decided to start doing some Nuke tutorials as well as After Effects. Um, and the first bunch are going to some, be some sort of um, basic how-tos. We're not going to go through full projects. I'm just going to show you how to use certain nodes and do certain things. So I've got a very, very simple project here. I've just kind of made this guy orange, sort of rotoed around him and dragged in this gray node and used this roto as a mask. But um, I'm not going to really go into that. See all the roto shapes, but um, yeah, it's not what today's about. Today's about how to render clips out of Nuke. Now, to render them, we need to write them to disk, and so the node that we'll be using is called write, the write node. So if we hit W, we'll get ah, that's in the wrong place. It's because that node was that roto paint node was selected, so we can separate that out. Now I hit W on the keyboard, and I've got this write node, so I can drag it into the bottom of my stream. That way, everything above it will get rendered. So if if it was placed, if the right node was placed in here, let's view it by hitting one. You can see it's just 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 coming down from the footage. But then we want to be writing out this this color information we're adding in with the grade node. So just make sure um, that your right node is at the bottom of your stream, and then you you'll be fine. You'll have no problems. Now, um, if we come into the properties pane of the right node, um, and if you can't see that, just double click. First of all, I would be thinking. What channels do you want to export? Um, RGB, just the red, green, and blue color channels, or do you want the alpha channel as well? If you've got one there, um, I just want the color information in in this example, um, so I'm just going to keep it to RGB. But if you want the alpha as well, or if you want just the alpha, then select as you need. So I'm just going to keep mine to RGB. Um, next, I'm going to go to file type. Okay, so you've got loads in here. You've got Cineon files, DPXs, EXRs, loads in here now. Um, I guess the two most common are probably TIFF, DPX, um, and MOV. So I, I'll, sh I'll show you MOV and TIFF. Um, so first of all, I'll show you MOV. Um, now this is similar to in After Effects. You'll have similar settings. First of all, is your codec. Um, you'll want to make sure that you well that you use whichever one you need. Um, as I'm on PC, I'd probably be using Avid DNX HD codec, and then I would then yeah be using MOV64 encoder. And this profile DNX HD 444 10-bit 440 megabits and frames per second I would have as 25. Now this may be different for you. So what you want to do is come over to just an empty space, hit S to look at your project settings, and you can see the project settings. This is 25 frames per second. So if you're rendering out a mob, you'd want this at 25 frames per second as well. Now I'm actually going to be exporting a TIFF sequence, okay? sequence of images because this is a bit different in the naming conventions and I want to go over that. So let's go TIFF and um, if we go for data type 16 bit we don't need 32 and for compression I just want to turn that to none. So TIFF 16 bit compression none. Color space just make sure that's the same as the footage is coming in. So if we double click that color space is default sRGB. So we'll have the same for this. And next, we just want to come to this file. So if we click this folder icon, I'm going to make sure that I'm on my desktop. And I want to actually, because this is going to export a series of images, one image per frame, I want to actually make a folder. So I'll call this roto underscore man. Don't put um, spaces in there. Nuke doesn't often mess up with spaces, but you, you really just want to avoid them. So just put, just put an underscore. Um, so roto underscore man, click OK, that's made a folder. Now I want to name my footage roto underscore man. Um, if I were to then leave it at that, it's not really going to work. What we need to do is go underscore and then the hashtag sign. I need to find that on my keyboard, there it is. So hashtag, 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 and then dot tif. Okay, now that's important because it's because it's going to be not Rotman, sorry, Rotoman, um, because it's going to be exporting. I think as one hundred and sixty, yeah, one hundred and sixty-five frames. Um, it's it's going to have one hundred and sixty-five, one hundred and sixty-five files. So if we just if we didn't have these hashtags here, it would just keep overwriting, and you just have one file. Um, but what this this is telling the software to do is use these hashtags. As numbers, so it'll go roto underscore man underscore zero 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 zero, roto underscore man underscore zero 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 one, and so on. So you've got 165 different images. So then, when you drag that into something like Premiere or Nuke Studio, it'll play it back as footage. Um, but I, I prefer working with image sequences a lot more because I find 
especially turning off that compression there's a lot less compression and it's a lot higher quality so i either go tiff or dpx but we'll go tiff for now so roto underscore man underscore hashtag 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 dot tif click save and there you go it's gonna put that in there so all we need to do now is we want to click render so once i click render it'll ask me okay where do you want to rent which frames do you want to render now input is the input file because the input file gave me 214 frames global is 218 frames because my project setting is set up like that but i've only worked on you can see this is my work area i only worked on the first 165 frames so i'm going to change it to custom okay um and then i'm going to type in one to 165 because i only want to do these frames or if i wanted to do just the first 100 frames i can type in one to 100 but i'm just going to type in one to 165 and i'm going to click the last thing i need to do is click ok now that's going to start rendering and it'll, it'll show you a little progress bar as it goes along um, if you were re rendering a .mov file obviously you just end up with one video file um, if you're rendering a tiff sequence obviously you'd end up with just a tiff sequence so um, I'm going to pause the video here and then I'll just restart the video just to show you the final outputted images and so I'll see you in see you in a sec. Okay, so you join me back in, um, well, not in Nuke, in Windows Explorer, but um, what you see here is just all the images um, that it's exported out and when you drag this into something like after effects or whatever we want to edit in after effects um, premiere or nuke studio you have the option to import as an image sequence and it plays back just as normal footage um takes up more room but i prefer this way and i showed you how to do the mov anyway um with the mov you don't need these hashtags in there you can just have dot mov at the end um so just very quickly this is what it would look like just type dot mov and then you'll see that this whole interface then will change from the file type of tiff It'll change to dot mov, um, what should do when my uh, PC responds. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed um, this tutorial. I hope it helped. Um, there you go. So you got mov there because we changed that. So we could just change this. Um, t -t 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 have a DNX HD, HD and then render frames one to one six five. Click OK and then it'll start rendering and compressing a dot mov file. Um, but I won't I won't kind of keep you now. I hope this helped and I shall see you guys in a bit. Cheers